I saw a crazy video that I absolutely had to share with you guys and give you the real background information on because your money in the banks might be snatched up. In this video, let's talk about bank runs. Why are people trying to get their money out of the banks? Should you be pulling your money out of the banks? Will you even have that option at one point because they've been talking about digital dollars and negative interest rates and a whole bunch of crazy gas and clouds and smokes. We're gonna clear all that up today and more. So please keep it locked, it's Crystal with the Cash Compass. All right, welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money, but for whatever reason, they forgot to mention it. Please be sure to subscribe because we talk about everything from personal finance to investing to the economy, and I get right into it. So please watch this clip from the FDIC chairman, or chairwoman, I guess. And if you don't know what the FDIC is, it's basically the people who insure your money in the bank. So up to $250,000 is protected as long as you are in the FDIC insured bank. So let's take a look. We're living in unprecedented time. At a time of a pandemic like this, it is way too easy to get confused and to have fear about what you should be doing with your money in your accounts, especially as you're looking at the volatility in the stock market and the financial sector. This is what I would like you to take away from this. Your money is safe at the banks. The last thing you should be doing is pulling your money out of the banks now, thinking that it's going to be safer someplace else. You don't want to be walking around with large wads of cash, and you certainly don't want to be hoarding cash in your mattress. It didn't pan out well for so many people. And I will tell you this, no depositor has lost a penny of their insured deposits since 1933 when the FDIC was created. So if you're talking about having your money in a safe place, please, keep it in an FDIC insured bank. All right, I don't know about you guys, but when someone's telling me with sweet, soft music in the background what to do and what not to do, it makes me want to do the exact opposite of what they're saying. So she's trying to tell us, listen, don't trust yourself. Don't trust your house. Your money's not safe there. Keep it with us. We've never lost a penny. And then I'm like, okay, so you made a video to tell me to trust you to not pull my money out because I can't trust myself. The fact that you have to come on here to tell me to keep my money in the bank makes me want to take a deeper dive. So let me share with you what I've been finding. When we are in a recession, which I talked to you about what a recession technically is in this video up here so you can click that for more information but when we are in these times banks fail when banks fail a lot of times they will try to have another bank buy them so basically nothing really happens to you nothing really affects you what happens is it just kind of gets transferred to a different entity but when there are no buyers the bank fails and then the fdic has to come in and give you your money back. And anything you had in the bank that was above 250,000, you gotta figure that out with the bank. It's above them now. So let's go over the FDIC's finances. So within the US economy, we have over $14 trillion of deposits in these FDIC insured banks. Of the 14 trillion, only 8.7 is actually protected by the FDIC because like I told you, there's a $250 cap. So they basically are saying all this $8.7 trillion, if these banks fail, we will be giving you your money back. So no need to worry. And we've never lost a penny. Okay, come with me. Let's take a look at their finances. So I'm an accountant, so quite naturally I get a little bit nerdy, but here is their balance sheet and you can see their assets. They only have $111 billion of assets in total. Let that sink in. You're telling me that you are insuring $8.7 trillion worth of money, but you only have $111 billion of assets? Where's my calculator? I literally can't make any sense of that. They actually only have a just above 1% of the money that they claim that they can pay out. That sounds problematic to me. And that's being conservative because as you can see, some of this includes fixed assets. So in order for them to get you your money, they're gonna go ahead and sell their buildings and sell their computers? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're not doing that so even if they were to do that that I mean that only makes up one percent of the people what about the other 99 percent of people who want their money to look at it a different way let's just say this let's say they were like okay you know what all these banks are failing here's what we're gonna do we're gonna just sell all of our assets get the cash and then give everybody something equally well if i take their assets divided by the u.s workforce which is how many people are actually working in america that would be about 699 dollars per person now, i don't know about you but if i got 699 dollars i would be i'd be fighting also what happens when you pull your money out of the bank is the banks don't have that money to lend out anymore if you didn't know 
when you put your money in the bank you are giving your money to the bank they will take your money and they will give it to somebody else as an investment they'll give it out as a loan as a credit card i mean your money doesn't actually sit in the bank at one point like last week at least 10 percent of your money had to be in there but the federal reserve said it's okay we don't need to keep any reserves for these people just go ahead and loan the money out so if you pull your money out it's less money they have to actually give out so they don't want you to pull your money out because they want to keep this going let's keep on giving people loans giving people houses and now that we have no reserve requirements we can just loan your money over and over and over again if you pull money out of the bank that ruins the ponzi scheme when you pull your money out you also protect yourself from bail in laws we all know what bailouts are but if you didn't know, there are bail-in laws, which means if you have your money in a bank that is failing and nobody wants to buy that bank up, what they are legally allowed to do is say, hmm, this customer has $10,000 in the bank. We, we gonna go ahead and take that, we need that. And in exchange, like, don't worry, we're gonna give you something. We can't just take it, there's eminent domain laws. You can't just take people's property. So we're gonna give you some shares in our company. But why the hell would you want shares in a company that is failing? You're giving me $10,000 worth of shares in a failing company. If I try to go sell it to make my money, who's gonna buy that? If the bank is failing, why would anybody want to buy stock of a failing bank? It's mad. But you unknowingly agreed to this, okay? So this can happen. Obviously, I don't think this is something that would happen tomorrow. But if it did happen, you're screwed. And you have to think about what's going on right now is, is crazy. People are not able to pay their mortgages. There are big companies letting you know that they will not be paying their rent for months because of what's going on. So what does that mean for the banks? It means that they are not getting as much money as they used to get and they will have some sort of liquidity crunch. It's only a matter of time. So people want to pull their money out because they want to protect themselves from the bail-in clauses. They want to protect themselves from not getting all their money insured by the FDIC. And obviously you guys might be thinking, well, everybody's not going to fail at the same time. But even if 1% failed, they wouldn't be, they would barely be able to cover it. They only have 1% of the assets and they're going to try to do whatever they can to make sure you keep your money in there. You might have the government come in and say, don't worry, we will insure your losses as well. Don't pull your money out. Don't pull your money out because they want to keep this going. So what does this have to do with negative interest rates and digital dollars, right? Because I did talk about that. There is currently only $1.75 trillion dollars of actual physical cash in the world okay if you do the math that ends up being about four thousand dollars per person and that's being conservative because remember we are not the only country that uses our money there are so many other countries that also use our money so our dollars are also in those other countries so who knows what the real number is so basically we pretty much are already in a digital system okay the majority the vast majority of our money is already digital so it won't be so hard to just kind of pluck out that last 1.75 trillion and how could they do that well with a digital dollar and if we have digital money mm, might have to move up the country if we ever enter a digital dollar system it can't be forced on us they have to make it seem like it's something that we want they would probably do something like make it and make it a little bit more challenging for you to use cash or make it a little bit more expensive for you to use cash so eventually you'll stop using cash and just using cards same thing with these little stimulus packages they can say we're gonna give it to you digitally. Like we're gonna have a digital wallet and you can have your cash this way. So they're kind of already going to, you know, get you warm to the idea of using everything digital. And if we go completely digital, they will be able to track every single dollar you use. So, you know, for my street pharmacists out there, they can tax us easily and instantly and they just all up in your business i mean you don't have to even be doing anything illegal but it's like i don't really want everybody to know where i'm spending every single dollar and in general they just have greater control over what they can do with the money because right now we still have an escape goat if they start having these crazy interest rates we can just pull our money out we don't have to participate in the bank system but if we have digital currency if they want negative interest rates boom we have it and you can't do anything about it because there is no cash option negative interest rates is when you are paying the bank to keep your money right now we have interest rates at most large banks at like 0 0.01 which is completely ridiculous but at least it's positive at least nominally it's positive right negative interest rates would turn that 0 0.01 to negative one or negative two You're basically paying them to have them take your money and then loan it to somebody else. And this is not unusual. It has happened already across the world. Japan has negative interest rates and what ends up happening is people pull their money out 
and keep it in their house. They hide it in their mattress. So when you have digital money, there is no more hiding. So if they want it to be negative interest rates, they will make it negative interest rates. So to a certain extent, they've already been having some practice in the world. They tried just cutting people off from the dollar altogether. They did that in India and it didn't go so well. They have negative interest rates in Japan and people are pulling their money out. We already see resistance and they're gonna just kind of fine tune it to make it better. So will we have a digital dollar? I don't know, but it, they've already been talking about it. The link in my bio goes into great detail about their talks about negative interest rates and digital currency. So please click that. So all in all, if you want to pull money out of the bank, you know, it's obviously your decision. From my point of view, it doesn't hurt. Worst case, you have some cash. And if you want to put it back in the bank, you can absolutely do so. This is not something I think will happen immediately. I just like giving you guys this information, sharing my thoughts on it and keeping you informed. And if this story develops, I'll develop a video. <laughs> All right, that will do it. If you like this video, then please like this video and share it with your friends, spread the word. Talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you think about the digital dollar and negative interest rates. And if you ain't doing anything else, you know what to do, binge watch me. <laughs> and until next time, keep your money up.